All right, guys, in this video, we are going to learn all about JSX. JSX is probably the word you're going to see and hear a lot in the world of React. So it's really important that you understand what is JSX and why is it used. All right, let's begin. JavaScript XML or JSX is an extension to the JavaScript language syntax. With the React library, it's an extension to write XML-like code for elements and components. And just like XML, JSX tags have a tag name, attributes, and children. Now, why do we need JSX? Well, the truth is, JSX is not a necessity to write React applications. You can definitely use React without JSX, but JSX makes your React code simpler and elegant. As you might have already seen, it provides a syntax which is familiar to many developers. JSX ultimately transpiles to pure JavaScript which is understood by the browsers. So we talked about what is JSX and why do we use it. But how does it work behind the scenes? What does the code look like without JSX? Let's take a look at that. What I will do is create a React component using JSX and without using JSX. That way you not only understand how JSX translates to regular JavaScript, but also appreciate how it brings out simplicity in your code. Now I'm going to start by creating a new file called hello.js within the components folder. This is going to be a simple functional component that renders hello Vishwas in the browser. So first step as always, import React. Second step, create the function that returns what appears to be HTML but is in fact JSX. const hello is equal to an arrow function, so empty parentheses, and within the curly braces, we are going to return HTML, which is in fact JSX. Hello, Vishwas. So a div tag, within the div tag, an h1 tag, and the text, hello, Vishwas. Finally, make sure to export it as the default export. Now in app.js, I can import the component and include the tag in the render method. So import hello from components slash hello. I'm going to comment out greet and welcome and instead include the hello tag. If you save the files and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see hello Vishwas. So this is the JSX version of hello component. Now let's rewrite the component without using JSX. To help us do that, the React library provides a create element method. So within the function, the code now changes to return react dot create element and this method at minimum accepts three parameters the first parameter is a string which specifies the html tag to be rendered for our example we need a div tag to be rendered so react dot create element with the first parameter a string called div the second parameter, we get to pass any optional properties. For the example we have right now, we don't need any additional properties, so we can simply pass in a value of null. The third parameter is the children for the HTML element, that is children for the div tag. Again, for our example, we simply have the text hello Vishwas, which we will pass as the third parameter. If we now take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text hello Vishwas. But this is slightly different from what we had before. The h1 tag is missing. So let's include that. h1 and a closing h1. If we now take a look at the browser, 
The output is not what we were looking for. If we inspect the element, you can notice that it is just inner text to the div tag and the h1 tag is not a DOM node. Let's fix this. If we go back to VS Code, it turns out that the create element method can accept any number of elements as children. So let's split the h1 tag and the text into two elements. So the third parameter is going to be now the h1 tag and the fourth parameter is going to be the text hello vishwas. If you now take a look at the browser, the output is slightly different but it is still not what we are expecting it to be. If I inspect the element now, we still have the div element but it contains two text nodes. h1 is a text node and hello vishwas is a text node. To render h1 as an h1 element and not as a text node, what we have to do is call the create element method for the second time. So if I go back to VS Code, the third parameter now is going to be again react.createElement. The first parameter is the tag, so h1. We have no additional properties, so null. And finally, the text, hello vishwas. If we save this and take a look at the browser, the output is finally what we were looking for. Hello Vishwas in an h1 tag. Now let's go back and take a look at the second parameter we have been ignoring. The second parameter basically is an object of key value pairs that will be applied to the element. For example, let's say we need an id attribute on this div tag. We can specify an object, key is id and the value is hello. If you now take a look at the browser and inspect the element, you can see the id attribute with the value of hello. Similarly, let's say we need to add a class to the div tag. So within the object, class of value dummy class. If you take a look at the browser and inspect the element, you can see the class attribute being applied. But if you take a look at the console, you're going to find a warning. Invalid DOM property class. Did you mean class name? In JavaScript, class is a reserved word. We did see the class keyword being used to create React components in the last video. So in React, a CSS class has to be specified using the class name attribute. So instead of class, it has to be class name camel cased. Take a look at the browser. There is no warning in the console. And if you inspect the element, you can see that we still have the class attribute being applied as dummy class. Now the same in JSX is going to be div class name is equal to dummy class. So there you go, a React component with and without using JSX. And by now, it must be clearly evident which is the more simpler approach. Basically, each JSX element is just syntactic sugar for calling react.createElement. And that is why you have to import the React library when you use JSX. If you take a look at greet.js, you probably wonder why is React being imported. I don't even notice it being used anywhere. But the fact is, JSX translates into React.createElement, which in turn uses the React library. Our example just has two elements. But imagine a component with 10 or 100 elements. It starts to become really clumsy. JSX, on the other hand, will keep the code elegant, simple, and readable. Let me also talk to you about some of the differences you are going to see in JSX compared to regular HTML. The first one, which we have already seen, is class being replaced by class name. Similarly, we also have for being replaced by HTML for. 
Again, for is a keyword in JavaScript. You are also going to see camel case property naming convention instead of HTML attribute names. For example, on click and tab index will become on click and tab index, that is camel casing. We will see these differences as we progress through the series, so don't worry about having to memorize them. Lastly, I want to point out a link which may be very relevant depending on the time you're watching this video. The React team is working on making some breaking changes, which of course is for the good of React, but that also means you might see changes in the code you write. One of the biggest changes proposed is changing class name to just class. There are a couple more changes listed as well, so I will leave a link in the description down below. The changes are targeted for React 18 or 19, I believe, so we have a good year or two before these breaking changes are made. Nevertheless, please do take a look at this link as it will help you stay updated with the changes. All right, that is pretty much what I wanted to discuss about JSX. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. I'll see you guys in the next video.